everybody. Making a video today about the oil pump and drive on the Shibura N844 LT engine. Uh, this is an engine out of a 2010 uh, New Holland L175 skid steer. Uh, it's also fitted on uh, quite a few other New Holland skid steers, also the case counterparts, uh, as well as um, some other fixed equipment, um, scissor lifts, things like that. Uh, this engine is, is cast by Shibura and then private labeled under some other names as well. So uh, you may know this engine uh, under the Perkins family as the Perkins uh, 404. Uh, this particular version of the engine being turbocharged and the long stroke 2.2 liter would be known as uh, like a, two, or a 404C-2. 22L, I think, or something like that. But there's there's a, quite a few engines that in this family uh, that that are going to have this type setup. Uh, also, another engine would be the Caterpillar Cat 3024, is also a um, uh, a rebadged uh, Shibura um, N844 series engine. Uh, so even though these engine families maybe have different dressings, they have different uh, different rocker boxes, different turbo location. Um, maybe it's not a turbo version. Uh, a lot of this stuff on the front end of the engine is going to be the same. So that's what we're going to be talking about today because there's, there's kind of a, a little mystery here involved with this oil pump. Uh, you, you look at this, um, and, and this isn't the complete oil pump. This is, this is the part that uh, is mounted in the block. It's a little hard to tell because of the angle I've got the camera on, but this pin is not in the center of this oil pump. It's actually to one side. I'm going to show you uh, an oil pump that's been pulled out. Uh, this right here is um, the oil pump that was taken out of the engine. See, it's off to one side. Uh, another thing you'll notice, this oil pump is a little different size. It's, um, it's a, uh, a different uh, version of it, but, uh, uh, you know, of course, fits into the same into the same hole in the block. So to remove and install this pump is a little bit odd. Uh, there is a puller tool that uh, Perkins makes and, and New Holland and whatnot, uh, but you don't really need the puller tool to get it out. You just need the tool to install it. To get this out, uh, on the other side of the engine, in, inside the block, there's a nut on this that you can remove and actually pull this shaft out. Uh, then you can get a, a bolt through there and put a slide puller on it and thump it out. Um, you know, and then this is a press fit. Uh, you can see <laughs> kind of where it fights getting out and going in. Um, because this is offset to the center to, or to one side, and there's 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 holes that need to line up. Um, there, you can't just push it in any which way. It won't work. You have to line it up so the holes are in the right place. And you also have to line it up so that the shaft is in the correct place to um, center the gear that goes over this. So they make a tool uh, that you have to use to put this on there. And essentially the tool has two guide pins. You, you thread into some of the front timing cover holes. And then the new pump slides through this tool and uh, holds it in the correct orientation. And then you can drive it in with a drift and a hammer. So uh, the first thing that goes in is, after you've got this in place is this uh, thrust washer. And this thrust washer just kind of goes in there like that. Um, now, before I put any of this on, we're going to put some uh, assembly lube on there. I'm using a black based, or a, a black Molly lube, but you could use uh, white lithium, lube replate 105, anything anything like that and uh, that thrust washer will go in there like that then the next part of the pump is actually the um, the body here um, of the idler it's very hard to tell but there's a laser etched one right here and then there's a laser etched zero there which uh, will coincide with the mark on the um, camshaft and the mark on the flywheel 
or the crank snout. So let me get that kind of closer to where it needs to be. And once again, we can put a good little helping of uh, grease in there. <clears throat> on that face. Mm, so it's a little bit tough here. Got to kind of keep turning Turning this until we get them together. Okay, so that's good there, but the cam isn't good, so we can get that turned until they both line up. Okay, so this is probably hard to see, but here I have that zero mark there, and that valley lined up with that, and then I have that lined up there. Now you can see in here. <coughs> The, sh the shape that's left for that trochoid. And the trochoid is this guy right here. So this is the pumping element that, that actually goes in there. Now, uh, if this isn't oriented correctly, it'll be in the wrong place and you won't get um, the correct action between the outer and the inner here. Now the outer element here it kind of runs it can run in and out a little bit because there's a spring and there's just a tang of the spring that goes in there um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this trochoid in there I'm going to use more grease especially on this back face here um, you know you got to remember when you're when you're building a brand new engine like this especially one like this where the oil pump cannot be pre um, you can't run the oil pump without running the engine. It's not like a small block Chevy where you can pull out the distributor and stick a drill tool down in there and, you know, fire up the oil pump. So we've got to make sure that this oil pump is going to prime immediately when we start it up. So the um, best way I know to do that is to essentially pack the oil pump with a thick, viscous, you know, um, oil or grease or something. Um, and especially a grease like, like this engine assembly lube that is going to dissolve in engine oil. Uh, so we pack that with a very nice viscous fluid here, and then as soon as you fire up the, uh, the engine, that makes a nice prime and will get the pump started. So I'm going to put some in there, and then slide that element in there. So there you can see how that trochoid element goes in there. And then as this rotates, you've got five elements on the outside and four on the inside, just like a little Wankel engine. And it, um, it's a fixed displacement pump. Um, so something to mention here, this front priming cover that goes on the front of the engine, this section right here, this bore right here, is what pilots this part of the pump, which is connected to the gear. You cannot rotate the engine without this front cover being on, because when you rotate the crank, that puts a lot of force on, on this guy here, and it'll tend to want to twist it outwards, and there's nothing to resist that because the cover isn't in place. So you really have to have the cover in place before you turn the engine. So once we do this here, I will, uh, next step for me will be to install the timing cover and then time the engine, then put the heads on. Do this without the heads on because then we don't have to worry about any timing interfer interference or anything like that. Um, we can watch how the cam moves and, and uh, you know, time the, when I talk about timing, I'm talking about the uh, injection pump timing because uh, it's done off the cam. Um, so, number one, don't <laughs> rotate the engine until this is fully installed.
so I'm going to go ahead and put more grease in there, really pack that grease in so that we've got that nice insurance on startup. Okay, so we've got that in there. Next on this pump is uh, the pump cover. That's this little guy right here. Uh, I'm going to clean this up real quick because it's kind of got some... Uh, Oh, stuff in it from its uh, trip from China. Another thing you'll notice about this front cover is it um, it goes in and actually references on on that right there. So when you assemble this, you've got to have it uh, the right, it's got to be the right um, orientation before it will drop into the timing cover. That guy goes on there. And... Then the next parts to go on are this spring. Let's see, I got that orientation right. Oh, here we go. Shim. And this is a select fit shim. Um, it's a select fit shim and what this does is it um, it sets them out of back and forth for that. And then that goes on to provide some tension and then the snap ring. So um, that's it. Um, there is, we should check this backlash here. And I'm not sure where we check that since uh, That's bound up on something there. But I believe we checked this amount of backlash here, and that's set with that select fit shim. And uh, then cover goes on, and uh, well, you have to put your um, governor thing in there, and then the cover goes on, and that's, uh, that's how that oil pump goes on to the Shibura N844 series engines.